If you're starting nursing school soon, this is the perfect time to sign up for Crucial Concepts Boot Camp. This nursing school prep course teaches success strategies, foundation concepts, and dosage calculations so you can start your program feeling confident and ready for what's to come. Sign up now and get a free study guide covering a topic so many students struggle with, all electrolytes. Go to straightanursingstudent.com forward slash boot camp to sign up for Crucial Concepts Boot Camp and get a free electrolytes study guide. That's straightanursingstudent.com forward slash boot camp. Hello there, I'm Nurse Mo, and this is the Straight A Nursing Podcast, where I teach nursing concepts and share tips on how to thrive in nursing school and beyond that at the bedside. So today we're going to be going down our career pathway, talking about something that can really help you stand out in an interview or a job application situation and a way to keep track of all your skills, accomplishments, and competencies that you develop over your career as a nurse. Now, before we dive into that, let's take a quick minute for our listener shout out. And this one goes out to Heather, who says, I just passed my NCLEX PN. On to the RN. Crucial Concepts Bootcamp was invaluable, especially the medication math. I never missed one math problem. Heather, thank you so much for taking the time to share your win. You passed your NCLEX for your LPN, and I'm so, so proud of you. And I'm also excited for you to continue on your education journey to get your RN license. That is awesome. So if you're wondering what Heather is talking about, she's talking about my Crucial Concepts Bootcamp. If you've listened to this podcast for more than about 10 minutes, you've definitely heard me mention it because it can be so impactful for not only RN students, but LVN and LPN students as well, just like Heather. So if you'd like more information about that, I'll put the link in the episode notes. And of course, you can always go to straightanursingstudent.com and click on courses in that top menu bar. So what are we talking about today? What is it that could A, set you apart from the crowd when you're applying for jobs and B, give you a really easy way to organize and archive everything related to your nursing career. Today, we're talking about a nursing portfolio. So when it comes to looking for jobs, whether you're a new grad nurse or a seasoned, experienced nurse, you always want to showcase your best self, right? And a really great way to do that is with an up-to-date nursing portfolio. Now, another reason to create and maintain that nursing portfolio is because it creates a history of your career. As you apply for jobs now and also in the future, Your portfolio is a fabulous resource for highlighting your accomplishments in resumes and cover letters. I don't know about you, but every time I sit down to work on a resume or write a cover letter, I always have to really think and try to go back through my memory to think of things that I can include that highlight specific accomplishments specific to that job that I'm interested in applying for. So what is a nursing portfolio? So for a student, a nursing portfolio is a synopsis of your achievements throughout nursing school, all packaged up together with your resume. Now, for an experienced nurse, it's going to be beyond that. It's going to be a history of your career and your accomplishments. But really, more importantly, it's a way to help make yourself stand out from the crowd, show prospective employers that you really do take yourself and your career seriously, and demonstrate how dedicated you are to your career. Another really great benefit of maintaining a nursing portfolio is that any certifications or other frequently requested items are always at your fingertips. Have you ever needed to show someone a specific certification, for example, or any specific document in your life, and you spend a day or two looking for it because it's just in a pile somewhere and you know you put it somewhere really safe. Well, if you have a nursing portfolio, all of those things are immediately accessible. So now let's talk a little bit about the format that your nursing portfolio takes. So you want to keep both an original hard copy version as well as a digital version as a backup. And you could even create your digital version so that it looks very professional so that if somebody wants to look at your nursing portfolio and they are, say, in another state, you don't have to send your hard copy, right? You could send them that digital version. 
So one option is to simply create a PDF document. You've got everything scanned and you have it all in a document. So the problem with this is it's maybe not organized by category and it might not be easy for someone to find exactly what they need. So another thing you could use is an online platform such as Hiration or Portfolium to showcase your nursing portfolio. And if you're tech savvy, And if you want to be super extra, you could even create your own custom website using a platform like Squarespace or Wix, which is really easy to use their drag and drop website builders. And you could also just make a view only document in Canva, which is a fabulous online graphic design software. It's Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. They have a free version. You could make your digital portfolio in Canva and share it as a view only document. So that's just a few ideas for creating your portfolio. Again, you're going to have a hard copy, preferably in a three ring binder with tabs. So everything's really easy for you to locate. And then that digital backup, and then possibly also a digital version that looks very professional and well put together that you can share with others. So you're probably thinking, well, what what's actually going to go in my nursing portfolio, Mo? So as you're putting together your nursing portfolio, Keep in mind that the items that you're choosing should give a prospective employer or a school admissions office. Maybe you're going to use this when you apply to your graduate program. You want to give these individuals a full picture of who you are as a professional nurse and also kind of document your career progression. Note that not every section that I'm going to be talking about will be applicable to you as some sections are more generated towards students while others are more likely to be utilized by a nurse with a lot of experience. But this list is meant to give you some inspiration for what you will include in your portfolio. So first of all, put some kind of a cover page on this, especially if you are offering this as a leave behind. I wouldn't leave behind your original copies, but if you print off color copies of your originals and you want to have a leave behind type portfolio when you go to an interview, you want a cover page on that. You would also need a cover page on a digital format as well. This should have your name, your license, your education level, and I'm not saying your license number necessarily, but what license you have, RN, NP, LVN, LPN, et cetera. You also want to include your education level, your contact information, and if you've got a LinkedIn profile that's all zhuzhed up and looking good, share that as well. So again, cover page, name, license, education level, contact info, and LinkedIn profile if you have one. And then a table of contents can be really helpful for a digital portfolio. You can also, if you make one in Canva, for example, you could have your table of contents and then link to other pages within that document. If you are just using this as a leave behind, maybe a hard copy, you are going to be tabbing your portfolio. So you wouldn't necessarily need a table of contents because the items are clearly visible on those tabs. I also advise adding your cover letter and your resume. So a cover letter may be utilized if the portfolio is being presented for a specific position, right? Because you always want to write that cover letter for that specific position in mind. And though the cover letter and the resume are traditionally provided at the time when you apply for the position, including them here ensures that everything is in one place. I'll also talk in a little bit about some tips for what to include on a new grad nurse resume because I understand a lot of students who are graduating have a hard time figuring this one out. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. It is also perhaps a good idea to include a section for recommendation letters and ways that you've been recognized. So what I mean here is include letters of recommendation from school faculty. So this would be more applicable to a student looking for their first job, volunteer organizations that you've worked with, families and patients. If they write a letter saying how amazing you are, include that and possibly even past employers from a prior career. If you're a new grad nurse and you haven't really worked in healthcare, but you've got some glowing recommendations from past employers, then you can definitely include those. If you've ever been nominated for special recognition, such as a DAISY award or a scholarship, include these as well. Were you highlighted in the school or hospital newsletter? This is great. It gives people kind of an idea of who you are, your accomplishments, and a little bit about your personality, but still remaining professional. 
So including things like this really personalizes your portfolio and makes it stand out. Now, if you're that new grad nurse, you may also want to include two or three glowing clinical evaluations from your clinical instructors as well. Now, what about transcripts? There are times when showcasing your impressive academic record may be beneficial. For example, if you're applying to graduate school or a new grad program that's really competitive. It's also just a good idea to keep your transcripts in your portfolio for your own personal reference so that you can always go back and see, oh, yes, I did take a class in developmental psychology, and I need that for this other program that I'm applying to, then you know that you've met the criteria. A section on leadership could be really great. Experienced nurses may want to include a section that highlights the details of any leadership roles, such as precepting, working on QI projects, or conducting any research. You could simply type up a brief summary of your involvement in these projects and include that in your portfolio. Another section to possibly include is for community service and professional development. If your work as a nurse expands outside the hospital, include this in your portfolio. This could include volunteering with the elderly, organizing a health fair for patients with multiple sclerosis, or acting as chairperson for the local chapter of Sigma Theta Tau. A brief paragraph explaining your role and experience would make a great addition to your portfolio. Another section could be your nursing philosophy. This is a great section to talk about what nursing means to you, how your values help you be a better practitioner, and your future goals. Even if you don't share this in your outward-facing portfolio, you have a record of it because you could use these elements in cover letters, for example. And then lastly, a section on certifications and licensure. Include your nursing license or licenses and any certifications, especially advanced certifications, such as CCRN or WOCN. As far as your ACLS, PALS, BLS, all of that, include those as well for your own reference. And then if an employer asks about it, you can easily find that information. Let's take a tiny break, and when we come back, we'll talk about some tips for putting together your portfolio and building a new grad resume. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. So now let's talk about a few tips for putting together your portfolio. So Think of your nursing portfolio as a professional document that is going to supplement your resume. This is definitely not the time to get creative with decorative elements. It's not a scrapbook. It's a professional archive of your accomplishments throughout your career. This doesn't mean you can't add design elements, especially if you're creating your own website, for example, or that document in Canva or some other design program, but keep it simple, keep it clean, and keep it really organized. Place your certifications and other items that cannot be reproduced inside plastic page protectors so they don't get damaged and your portfolio always looks its best. And lastly, I mentioned this earlier, definitely use tabs in your physical portfolio so that everything is really easy to find. Now, if you're looking for more tips on starting your career, I'd love for you to go and listen to episode 275 where I talk with Amanda from the Resume Rx about navigating a job offer. She answers all those common questions that nurses have, especially new grad nurses. Again, that is episode 275, and I will link to that in the episode notes as well. Now I want to share with you some tips for building a new grad resume. So new grads often struggle with what to include in their resumes because, hey, guess what? They may not have any nursing experience at this time, but it's important to understand that even though you haven't worked as a nurse yet, you still have a lot of valuable things that you can include in your resume. 
So these are the things that I included in mine, and I got a job in a very, very competitive new grad program, completely different environment to what new nurses are looking at right now in the end of 2023, early 2024. When I graduated from nursing school, it was really hard to find a job, and the job that I applied for was a new grad residency program, and thousands and thousands of applicants applied for the job that I eventually got. So I'm going to tell you what I included in my resume. Maybe this will be helpful for you. So you want to have a section about your education, where you went to school, what degree you earned, your certifications and licensing, and then any honors and awards from nursing school. I also included details about my preceptorship. In my final semester, I had a 270-hour preceptorship. Some schools call it their capstone. Definitely include information about that. What did you learn? What units were you in? What competencies and skills did you work on during that time? Under nursing experience, you can include any volunteer service that you did in that nursing student capacity and any student nurse highlights. If you worked as a CNA or a patient care tech or an x-ray technician or a phlebotomist during nursing school, include that as well, but perhaps label that area healthcare experience. You also want to highlight your past professional experience, especially if you're coming into nursing from a prior career. There are a lot of crossover skills that you might not realize really apply here. So include those. You also want to include any special lectures that you've attended, like workshops, seminars, things like that, that are related to nursing that were supplementary to your nursing school education. It shows that you're interested in furthering your education and staying current in your field. And then you can also list your references or just list references available upon request. And you may also be supplying your references in the online actual job application itself. A few other tips for making a great resume is make sure it looks professional, neat, clean, tidy. Again, this is not the time to get cutesy or super creative. You can have design elements, but only if they support further communicating your achievements and the highlights of your resume. So look at it with an objective eye. You don't want your resume to be too busy. You don't want to have crazy fonts, different colors, things like that. This is the time to kind of tone it down. Keep things, again, clean, simple, and organized. And if you're not sure how to go about formatting your resume, there's all kinds of resume templates out there. I do have a special offer from the Resume RX where you can get 20% off the resume template bundle. I'll include a link to that in the episode notes so that you can check that out. And that really kind of jump starts your ability to format your resume, include the really important items, and make sure that your resume has everything it needs to stand out. The other thing that I would suggest, actually, this is not a suggestion. This is a must do. You have to have somebody else look over your resume and what they're looking for are perhaps poorly worded or grammar errors or maybe ways that you could talk about your skills and accomplishments in a more clear way. So with an eye towards that, and then also looking for typos. We don't want to have any typos in our resume, and we also don't want to have any formatting errors. I've been in many positions in my career because I've been way more than a nurse. I've done other things as well where I've been that person reviewing those resumes. And I will be honest, if I see a resume with a typo or a weird formatting error that is easily noticeable, to me that says that this person does not have attention to detail and is not meticulous in their tasks. And I won't even consider that individual. So you have to look at it with a very fresh eye You can look at it yourself, but often our brains don't see these little mistakes, so you send it off to someone that you trust and have them review it. Again, I've got a 20% offer for you with the Resume RX for their template bundles. You use the promo code straight A at checkout. I believe that will get you the 20% off. And then Amanda from the Resume RX also has a Resume Makeover Pro, which is an online program, which is more of a class. If you really need that extra help with your resume, she offers that as well. So I'll also include a link to that Resume Makeover Pro by Amanda in the episode show notes. So whether you're a new nurse heading out into the workforce for the first time, or you've been a nurse for a number of years, and you feel like you could get your professional documents more organized, Making a nursing portfolio is a fabulous 
practice. So I will also include in the show notes a link to this all written out so that you didn't have to hopefully stop and take notes as you were driving so that you can see all the components that were discussed. So Let's talk about what's coming up next week on the Straight A Nursing Podcast. Really excited. I say this all the time. I say this all the time, don't I, that I'm so excited about what we're talking about, but it's true. I really, really am. So next week on the podcast, we're talking about a very popular medication. We're going to be looking at GLP-1 agonists, otherwise known as semaglutide, otherwise known as Ozempic. So if you're following the show or subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player, you will not miss that episode or any others. Again, hope to see you back here next week. Bye for now. This podcast is brought to you by Straight A Nursing. Have you ever wondered what the science says about certain foods, products, or treatments? Does chiropractic actually work? Should I only buy organic foods? Are GMOs actually harmful? Is adrenal fatigue real? We've got you covered. The goal of the Unbiased Science podcast is to dispel misinformation and misconceptions across an array of science and public health topics. We love to debunk myths and help arm our listeners with information so they can make evidence-based decisions. Make sure to tune in to the Unbiased Science podcast to get all of your questions answered.